Welcome back to another episode of Sunshine on Lathe. If you're still enjoying it, drop a like on the video. That'd be tremendous. So it's less sunshine on Lathe at the moment, more cloudy skies and dreary, rainy days for us at the moment. But we will pull ourselves out of this. We've been in... Well, we haven't been in this position before, actually. It's our first sort of real relegation battle of the save, and I quite like these. I like As much as it's... You know, it's never nice to not be winning, but our expectations were perhaps a little bit... Too, I mean, they weren't. My expectations were, let's try and stay up. But when you get that glimpse of, oh, actually, we've got some quality here, and it's just started to sort of simmer down. But I do think it might just be a case of we're returning to the mean. Um, we maybe were overperforming, and now we're actually sort of performing at the level that perhaps is more accustomed to us. Although, I still, still think that we probably should be doing better. Uh, to have no wins in nine, despite having all those opportunities, is a bit of a shitter. But that's the way things go. More bad news. Putman Kitely's out for the rest of the season. GG! Um... Yeah, so that's happened. He's uh, torn some groin ligament or sprained a knee ligament or something like that. Basically, he's going to be out until about May. Uh, so that's essentially him done for the year. So that, that's just terrific, isn't it? <laughs> hey, never know. Maybe it'll be the change that we need. SYC when Putman Kiley gets sent off. SYC when other Whitport player is sent off. Yeah, it is a little bit in it. But to be fair, he's not been sent off for a while. I haven't bought off him 20, so it's all different to me. There definitely seems to be a long shots bug in there somewhere. Even that, there's lots of players in the lower leagues with stats over 14 for finishing long shots. Um, So... I talk about this quite a lot, but I think it genuinely comes down to the fact that the game isn't really designed for the really, really lower league management because the scaling isn't quite there. Um, so to me, the difference between a non-league player and like a Premier League player is not going to be measured in the stats between 1 and 20. Uh, otherwise, they would all have to be 1s. I feel like in order to measure that correctly, you'd have to have them out of 100 um, so that there's more granular differences so that it would show just how stark the difference could possibly be. And I think that's why you tend to see that sometimes. And the lower leagues can be a bit iffy. Trying to figure out the biggest plague. Red cards with Whitport or deflected goals with Fulham. Oh, God, yeah. The beta save with the deflected goals was absolutely insane. I think like 60, 70% of the goals we conceded were deflections. But I think that was just because we didn't play a DM and the defenders would get in the way and it would block stuff straight into the net. Still a bit weird, but yeah. You should also be seeing on your screen now the mock-up of the current Castle Park with our 5,500 seater stadium now looking fancy as hell with massive floodlights too, which I assume were uh, imposed on us by the Football League. But Castle Park is becoming a big boy now. It's good to see. Hosting league football, what more do you want? Villa BPK is some kind of reincarnation of Bruno Bridges. Yeah, he is. Although I do wonder if... I'm starting to think uh, now, particularly with his injury, if he might just not quite be there. And maybe with a player that's kind of like him, but just better all round, could do a better job for us in League One, uh, League 2 next season, not League 1, I wish. And I think that's going to be one of my main priorities in the summer. I think he's found his ceiling of what he can do. I still think he overperforms his abilities, but I don't think it's doing enough now to the point where it might actually be holding us back. So we're going to see what happens with Alan Blake and Dion George in the team for the rest of the season. I don't think they're any better personally, but we'll see. So today we play Swindon. I mean, they have actually beaten us this season. So that, that's fun to know. Uh, they just, they've won quite a lot of games, actually. They just lose a lot of games too uh, and concede an insane amount of goals. So that could definitely help us. They're defensively shocking. And we're not even that bad defensively over the last period of matches. We just don't score. So, changes massively needed. We had a nice little rest, though, which has been helpful. So, Will, uh, Will Harding. Yeah, it is Will Harding. So, I keep thinking of Will Carling, the ex-England rugby player, I think it was. Um, so, Bishop and Teal back in. Uh, hopefully, we can build that partnership up again a little bit. Billum and Lee still happy to go with that, despite, I don't know. Michael Lee has actually put in some okay performances in recent games, though. Last couple, not so good. But in between, not looking too bad. It seems that Alan Blake is also injured now. Uh, oh, Christ, he is, isn't he? Yeah. So it's literally Dion George uh, is the only right winger we have available this year now. But at least Lee Defty, uh, Lee Defty, Simon Defty's back, who has been one of our better performers this year, in fairness, because this is a must-win game. And with the form we're in, oh, we're just looking at the table. To be fair, if we did lose them, it would suck. But it's I don't think they're going to stay up anyway. What really matters to us is what Tranmere do. They are the key to this. So we will see. But it won't matter because I feel like if we get the win today and move to 48 points, I think that might actually be enough to keep us up in general. But it'd be nice to do a bit better than that now, wouldn't it? Wait, cling, flicked away. I'm going to just start off, do the first 20 minutes on our normal approach and see if we need to start imposing ourselves on the game a little. Oh my God, why, Michael? That's it. Get in on them. There we go. Curtis Thomas has won it. He's in through and finds Wait, Cling. Why did you pass it? You have a clean shot at goal and you chose to pass it to a guy who can't. Well, I can't fault the start we've made. We've been superb so f Oh, what a save. Fair enough. Winterbottom has to deny the goal. Deny them there. So far, so good, really. Uh, the only chance they've had was that direct free kick. Oh. Just one day. One day. 
Tavares steps out for Swindon, and it's saved by Winterbottom. Finally, we've saved a penalty. We haven't actually created a chance today, but we are actually looking quite decent, amazingly. Uh, you'd like to expect that, but we finally saved a penalty. Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, that doesn't mean this game is by any means won for us, because we're still drawing. Um, but at least it's like maybe something to build on. Certainly been one of our more controlling performances as of late, and we could definitely look at things at halftime, see where we can improve that. Michael Lee goes straight past one, finds Billum. Don't shoot. There we go. Wait, Clean, can he turn? Oh, and a great save by Mortaldud. And again, well played. Oh, go on, right before half time. I'm actually quite content to stick with the same strategy. Billum! Over the crossbar. I'm fairly pleased with the way we're going, and I don't really want to start putting start making huge changes because we have actually done well in this first period. And I don't like, defensively, okay, we committed the penalty, but other than that, they've had no noticeable chances in this game. Okay, now I am going to make some little changes because we just haven't really started the second half with the same intensity as the first half. So we're going to go on the workboard in the box, up that tempo a little bit, Billum. Oh, if you could just fire a walk back inside. And Thomas, saved by the goalkeeper again. Good chance, though. Put this one on someone's head, Michael. Ball through. Harding, cleared. Still got it back. Where's the ball? George, Wakeling. Yes! Curtis Thomas gives us the lead. Oh my god, what a scramble in the goal mouth there, basically. Curtis Thomas, 24th goal of the season. He won't have an easier one to put in the back of the net all season. But what on earth was this? The defender just doesn't clear it. Harding gets in the way, and then he's trying to... I don't know what he's doing there, but what are we doing here with the tiki tacker? I think it's actually deflected into his path. Yeah, it has. That is such a fortunate goal. But finally, we have the lead against Swindon Town. Beautiful. I mean, it has helped that they've put in a shocker of a performance. Had two players under sixes. They haven't had a single shot in the second half. That's exactly what I wanted to see from us. Let's just scrape a little victory. Just nothing major. Just a little scraped victory against bottom of the league. Sometimes that's all you need. Um, Thomas doesn't win the flicker, but it's fallen down to Bishop now. Just a few minutes to go. Through for Wakeling. What a lovely first touch from Jacob Wakeling, and it's saved again. <laughs> he just cannot score to save his life lately, can he? Tons of options. Whips it across. Thomas! And it's just clipped the crossbar from Curtis Thomas. 15 seconds left here at Castle Park. Cleared away by Oljo. Don't know why they're running the wrong way. Oh my god! I thought that was going to be the equaliser, and I might have actually eaten my microphone had that counted. I mean, hardly he's offside, I guess, but there we go. Whitport 1, Swindon Town 0. A dominant performance in which we still only managed to score the one goal, but we did at least... We got lucky as well. They missed a penalty in this game, and that has probably allowed us to stay in this division. But what I would say as well, right? Tiniest little good run, and boom, we're still within touching distance of 11th place Oldham if we could actually turn this around. And we've got a win now, finally. And a clean sheet, which hasn't been that elusive lately. Oh, Jesus. And so now we move 11 points clear of the relegation zone with six matches to go. I think that's kept us up that victory. And now we can kind of chill, but try to win a few more matches this year. We've got some more winnable home games. Let's have it. Right, guys, we're back. And we had a phenomenal performance uh, against Forest Green, admittedly. But look at this. Ball inside for Michael Lee, who had put in a, a stonger. But look at this for a finish from Turk. Look at the tight angle. Manages to make it 1-0. But it was the chance creation. Nine chances in this game, seven of which were clear cut. But this, again, Michael Lee just driving forward. He, I think, Luke Billum can go in this one. Because I think Michael Lee is the, uh, the future of us on that left-hand side. He feels like BPK. Lovely finish to make it 2-0. And we beat Forest Green 10-1 over the course of the season this year. A very strange one. And again, lovely work. This time, Ryan Galvin into, uh, into Teal. And Kalinari, who started up top this time, pops it inside to Curtis Thomas, who was able to grab himself his second goal of the night. He suddenly just seemed to have found himself a little bit of form again. That goal against Swindon, as fortunate as it was, has helped us out a great deal. Unfortunately, it still wasn't enough for us to uh, get ourselves a clean sheet here against Forest Green. We did actually concede chances to them, in fairness, and they were probably worth it, the goal. Keeper does a bad job there. Unfortunately, though, next up, away at Wimbledon. We put in a decent uh, performance, but we're able to be, unfortunately, beaten 1-0. We had to play Kalantari at right wing because the four players that I would have picked in front of him were all injured or had to play elsewhere. And it was poor goal goalkeeping that cost us on the night here. The, the injuries are really mounting up in this team now. We were having to rotate an awful lot, and it's a shame. And then, unfortunately, things took an even bigger turn for the worse against Gillingham. Brandon Hanlon, header after three minutes from an indirect free kick, gave him the lead. Not too long after that, though, uh, they made it 2-0 with a ball over the top. Uh, defenders completely out of position, and Charles Cook was just able to smash this one home for Gillingham. First two shots of the game, bam, bam, 2-0 down. Terry Bishop then decided to get himself sent off again, because that's apparently all he actually does for us anymore. And within seconds of that one, we were 3-0 down uh, as Gillingham went and grabbed a third goal. Adams with the strike, in off the post, and it was curtains. But not before they managed to get a fourth goal before half time. Gillingham, of course, pushing high up the league, so it makes sense. Uh, but we were just all over the shop in this one. Just thunderous strike from Charles Cook. Just everything they touched went in in this game. We did have some chances, to be fair. And we did actually get ourselves a goal back as well. Curtis Thomas slipping one into the channel for Jacob Wakeling. But look, this kind of strike from Jacob Wakeling from here, those go in. 
But when he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, not a chance. Unfortunately, it really did not last long as uh, Grimsby were able to get themselves back in front not long after. Really nice football again. Bad defending for us once more. 5-1 down. We then sort of redeemed ourselves as once again, Michael Lee winning the ball in a BPK-esque fashion and just driving forward and doing what he does. Again, poor goalkeeping, but he scored another goal for us. Two and two for him. It's nice to see, but he has now hindered himself and is out. But then next up, our injury-riddled team were able to scrape a 1-0 victory at home against AFC Fylde with Curtis Thomas scoring a penalty in the 69th minute being the only goal of the game. But that's such a big goal. But then in the next game, Curtis Thomas gave us the lead again from the penalty spot after two minutes. He has been back in form over this last period, and that is literally the only reason we're doing well. Dion George with the ball in. Knight comes in. Curtis Thomas hits the post with it, but it still goes in, and we're 2-0 up after eight minutes. Chance creation again, absolutely on fire today. Stevenage played a 4-3-3, which probably didn't help them. And then a nice little simple one to finish things off for Curtis Thomas. Again, Billum puts it across. CT completes his hat-trick. He scored like seven goals in his last five or six matches again. It's back. And all that leaves us 15th in the league. But those three, well, four wins in our, I think we've actually won our last four home games, which is really, really good. CT, the main thing though, is him scoring goals again. That one against Swindon has like re, just regalvanized the guy. And he's back into scoring four and up to 28 for the season now. And really, I do think that when we, when he plays well, we win matches. The chances aren't stop, don't stop being creative for the most part. But unfortunately, sometimes we just don't get a chance to put them in. We're one of the best creative teams in the entire league. And if he could just, I mean, the fact is he's still scored 28 goals this season. I think it's Jacob Wakeling that's let us down this year. Now, we had a youth intake as well, which you should be seeing on your screen right now. Absolutely nobody worth talking about in it whatsoever. But... We did lose a player to Blackhaven. We had a player called Charlie Bennett poached by them. Now, it wasn't the same dude from the intake either because there was a dude from the intake. The guy from the intake was called Joseph Ibrahim. He was the guy from Blackhaven. He is going to be signing for us, but it's interesting. So the fact that they've nicked one of our players and put one in our youth intake, uh, what are they hiding? Or do they think we're hiding is my question. So we're finishing off today away at Scunthorpe United. I think it's unlikely we'll get anything considering the way our form's gone as of late. So I did, some little, I did a little bit of research. We've actually only lost four of our last 17 home games. It might even be 18 now because of the Stevenage game. But we've only got one win in our last 16 away games, despite winning five of our first six. I just think that that start to the season was just a complete fluke. And as you can see, tons of players out injured again. Uh, it's not great. I mean, who could even start for us today? Uh, who is even available? Um, right. Have we actually got anyone that can play on the right-hand side yet? So Dion George is back. Pat McCartley's not available. So at one point... Uh, Alan Blake, Rocco Adabati, Dion George was on international duty, and um, Putman Kitely was injured. So we had nobody. That's why I had to play Kalantari at right midfield. Whereas Dion George will be able to play in there today. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to do that. What am I doing? There we go. Uh, Michael Lee's injured for the rest of the season. Perez de Gracia and Kasimba have started some of the most recent matches because literally every single one of our DMs was out through either an injury or a suspension. Um, it's crazy. We've just been completely swamped by him towards the end of the year. But we still came through with some good results. Few players are back now. So Alan Blake is finally back fit again. It's nice to have a few players back for the end of the season, but I'm still not confident about this one. We came up against this quite a lot in the early stages of the season. I do wonder if that's why we were successful against them, because we're usually quite good against the 4 3 3. I'm going to do the. Why did it get Stevenage? Was inst did we have a. No. I'm actually sixth in the form table now. Really? I suppose they are Scunthorpe, yeah. So I go down the wings. That's what we're going to try. I'm interested to see how this goes because there is still the possibility of us finishing as high as 12th this year. And when you look at where we were been at certain points, we've kind of been yo-yoing all over the league. Williams. Ooh. Having Connor Teal back today does give me a little bit more confidence. Although Kasimba Kasimba and Perez de Gracia in those couple of games where they had to partner up, we did at least win a game in that period, to be fair to them. Like if you just said to me that we'd finish our first season in league football with a positive goal difference, I would have taken that comfortably. I would have expected us to have finished higher with that. But nevertheless, here we are. Oh, and Wakeling, and it's offside. We've actually started reasonably well here, actually. No chances for either team, but we're not looking too bad. Uh, Burgess drops it away for Dion George. Could he... Oh, drop it out wide for Williams, and it's wide of the goal. Oh, those chances don't come along very often. Wow, this is a good opportunity for us, though. If Dion George can put that on the head of Curtis Thomas, and we lead away at Scunthorpe United. Will we finally get an away win? Surely not. The last away win we got was the one at Oldham, where Collar Teal scored that screamer. Dion George... I think he's just taken them by surprise. Nobody's marking CT. 29 goals in the league this year now. He got 30 last year. Can he do it? Yeah, half time. And we've denied Scunthorpe even having a shot on target. And Curtis Thomas has done the job for us. It's also worth noting that when we beat Forest Green 3-1, uh, they had the worst form in the entire league. Um, as you can see, they've actually slipped down to 18th place, potentially. This was a team that were regularly running in the playoff spots. And I think I would be interested to see what their form looks like come the end of the season. I didn't realize they'd drop so far. We would actually finish above them. We've literally limited them to no opportunities at all tonight, which is a really good sign. Um, mostly just long range strike. Go on, Connor. Yes, Connor. Jacob Wakeling, can he spin the defender? It's not the best first touch from him at all, in fact. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. I feel like Jacob Wakeling last year would have been able to spin the defender and drive into that space. We've done very well to get away with that. We were completely out. No, you stupid. He's missed that. I don't know what he was thinking. Like, we were completely pressed out of our wits there. And we, if, had we played through that, they would have been so open, you know, in that position that they are. Oh, that's... Damn it. Usually, the, usually we win those challenges. Uh, it's a frustrating one. What a save. Winterbottom there with a massive stop. They are starting to throw a lot at us now. Players ready to make runs. Thomas's ball in. Williams! It's in. Tommy Williams makes it 2-0 away at Scunthorpe. Curtis Thomas with his 10th assist of the season. He's into double figures for both for two years in a row. That is just... Wait, what? Sorry. Where's the highlight? Either way, CT is putting a man of the match performance for us today that looks like we might actually get an away victory. And not only that, but away victory at Scunthorpe. Oh, go on, CT. Can he get through again? Great save from Watson. And we've been excellent here. They've actually played quite well through us there. Um, they Wow, Grant's just gone through everybody there. Oh, my Lord. And yet those go in. I just... Mm, it's just it's a bit painful to watch sometimes because they, they do seem to go in from those particular positions way too frequently, From no matter who's taking it. Frustrating one. Uh, George Grant does really well there to get past the defender, but it's just that sort of daisy cutter that doesn't really... That's a good finish, but... ah, oh, Come on, lads. But I think... I think we're going to get away with it and sneak into 12th spot by the end of the season. Galvin just siding his man down, just trying to keep us in bay. But I'm concerned now because it's an indirect free kick. I swear to God, do not concede from this. <laughs> My God. <laughs> there we go. We've done it. Oh, and a late goal sees us technically finish in the bottom half. I think Wickham's grabbed one late on. Amazingly, Swindon finished above Tranmere. So remember what I said about how 44 points would keep us up? Well... Turns out 40 points would have kept us up, but we got 60 in the end, which is actually pretty damn decent. Uh, we finished closer to the playoffs than we did to the relegation zone by 21 points clear in the end. We've certainly picked it up towards the end of the season. 67 goals scored. Not the most in the league, but certainly up there with Scunthorpe, ironically. And our defense was one of the worst towards the start of the season, and it definitely has improved slightly. So there we have it. First season in League Two, 60 points on the board. Good finish to the year. Winning away at Scunthorpe there is truly fantastic. Uh, it also denies them a chance to go up automatically. So we did finally find a little bit of form towards the end of the season, winning six, uh, five of our last seven matches, which really, really did help. With the away winning there is the key thing for me. The fact that we proved that we could do it still. So in the National League, as things stand at the moment, nobody's really secured up there at all. Down go Torquay. Uh, the others, again, still massively on the bubble. In League One, Preston are champions. Uh, Fleetwood and Middles were fighting it out there. Sunderland as well in the mix. Down go... Well, yeah. No, none of them are relegated yet. Amazing. In the Championship, West Brom go up. Fulham are promoted along with them. Bristol City, Newcastle, Blackburn. Wow. And Swansea in there as well. Down go Rotherham, Peterborough and Charlton. And in the Premier League, Liverpool looking... Well, they're in, they're in the right zone, shall we say. Palace done. Leeds looking pretty done as well. Uh, Villa definitely on the cusp. So, and as this video later tonight, I think... We've learned a lot about the way we want to play this year. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of outs this summer as we get rid of a lot of Deadwood and players that we're not going to be able to... Players that are on more money than they need to be anyway and would require even more. But we'll see how much money the board actually give me because they still haven't set initial budgets yet, which is frustrating because I want to see how much they're going to get. That way we can sort of plan for things next year because I do want to give Michael Lee a new contract. Um... I don't know if I want to give Jacob Wakeling a new contract, to be honest. I think we might be able to do better next year if we can just find someone else. I've got a lot of players on trial from Premier League clubs that have been released, and some of them look fantastic, and I want to save some money to just go straight at those guys because I really do think Michael Lee on the left is long-term BPK of that side, but I don't know if BPK is the BPK of the right side anymore. I think he might have just peaked. I don't think he's going to take as much further than he currently has. And uh, yeah, Terry Bishop, very unsure of. I might even remove him in this summer if he keeps, because he's just a mm, funny one. Anyway, um, so we'll find out probably the budget in the analysis video. I'm going to move a few days ahead and try and do that. So if you've enjoyed this season, and I hope you have, good finish. One three in a row at the end, actually. Uh, Curtis Thomas, I mean, what was this record? So yeah, CT scored eight goals in our final six matches or seven matches. And that's really what's catalyzed us. Him doing that is the difference, basically. So I'll see you guys very, very soon. Uh, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch. That's awesome. Thank you for coming. I think for coming. Hold your gun, Capybara. Bye-bye.